so I didn't know the post office was closed on Saturday, but uh, I think I know where somewhere else I can go where I can get what I need, so we'll try there next. How's it going? Welcome to this episode of Dark Skies. So today I wanted to carry on from the last video I did about um, photographing the Milky Way. So once you photograph the Milky Way and you have all of these awesome photos on your camera, once you get home you have to post process them, you have to develop them and bring out the life and detail in those photos. So that's what this episode is all about. It's about downloading these photos, having a look at what I got, and then post processing those. So before I get started though, as you saw in the opening there, I had uh, I stopped and picked this up. So what this is 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 uh, a project I've been working on for the past year and a half or so, and it came out last month. And I'm super excited to share this with you guys. So this is uh, a Canadian stamp collection uh, commemorating the 150th anniversary of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, which I'm a proud member of. And I had a photo selected. This uh, this Milky Way shot right here. Is, uh, is mine, which was super amazing. So honored to be a part of such an awesome um, commemorative stamp um, from, you know, from Canada Post. It's just so cool. And the other photograph and the photograph that's on the front here is from another um, awesome Canadian photographer, Alan Dyer, uh, amazingskydo.net or something like that, or Amazing Sky Guy. I'll, I'll post the, the link below to Alan's uh, portfolio, but yeah, if you are interested in picking up a stamp and you do live in Canada, any post office, you can go by and you can just ask for the astronomy collection. Uh, if you live outside of Canada and you're still interested in getting a stamp, you can go to canadapost.ca, I believe. I'll also post the link below and you can buy it, uh, even if you're in the US, if you're a big stamp person and uh, love the night sky. So super happy to share this, this with you guys. Again, just so honored to be a part of this. Um, this project and yeah I mean you know to hold this in my hand here and uh, you know have my artwork um, on a Canadian stamp is just it's just super awesome so yeah if you want to pick these up Canada Post um, or if you live in the States Canada Post's website cool so let's get to this um, I already went and got some coffee so I'm ready to go we'll just blast through all this stuff we're gonna look at um, you know getting the photos on your computer uh, selecting the right one to process and then getting into two kind of levels of processing. We're going to process um, in Lightroom just to kind of give you a quick and dirty if you only have Lightroom and you don't want to deal with things like Photoshop. But if you do want to dig into Photoshop, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, um, show you a little bit of stuff there as well as something called luminosity masks and how those really can help you with night sky photography. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so once you have all your images downloaded onto your computer, um, the first thing I do is I just start to pour over the images that I, I captured um, over the night and seeing, you know, try to find the best two or three to post process because I, I don't really go out to shoot an absolute ton. I really go out every time to just shoot a couple, um, but I'll end up taking an absolute ton of photos. It's just not all of them are all that great. Uh, and this is where, you know, Digital is great because you can take as many photos as you want until you find that one you really love. And it's part of that creative process when you're out there is just to, to poke around a little bit and find that kind of um, nice area. Uh, what I did though, you know, when I was out there, I actually did a time lapse. There's an absolute ton of frames uh, because of the time lapse, but it just turns out that one of the last frames in the time lapse is one of my favorite photos um, of the whole night. And it's just these hay bales here. And as I post process this image, this is the one I'm gonna take us through today. But as I post process this, you'll see this image really come to life. This is the raw right here. Um, but before I do that, um, just to kind of show you some other shots that I took, I did a bunch of vertical shots as well. 
that I liked a lot. Really nice kind of flow of these hay bales into the scene, drawing you into the Milky Way, which I thought was really nice composition. Of course, this is big old dirty airplane up here that, you know, again, I'll show you how to, uh, how to stamp clone, uh, clone stamp that out in uh, Photoshop and Lightroom as well. And then, so I'll basically just go over all the photos I took. Um, you know, I took this really cliche, uh, uh, headlamp shot, which I mean, not a lot of people say under the stars with their headlamp on because you won't be able to see the stars because it's so bright, but it just looks cool in a photo. But I don't really do a lot of these types of things anymore. Um, just because it doesn't really represent my style, but no, it doesn't mean you can't do it. It's, it looks cool. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. So, uh, you know, I started taking a bunch of these shots here, just like goofing around, trying to get this kind of reflective, you know, shot of what it would actually, you know, be like sitting out there uh, in the night, in the night sky. So this is generally what the first part of my process is, is I'll just kind of comb over the images um, and see what ones uh, work and which ones didn't. Uh, you know, there's one down here that I absolutely love too. Um, this shot here of me looking up into the stars. Uh, standing on these hay bales uh, and this one actually made it into the last video. I post processed this Let's see if I can find it here. Just to give you a quick little pre uh, preview So there's the post process version of that image, which I absolutely love so Yeah, when you download your photos to your computer pour over them select the you know best few images uh, and then start with the one you love the most and go from there and post-process that. And that's what I'm gonna do now. So jumping back to the image that I love, and I'm gonna show you guys how to post-process is this one here. Okay, so the first thing um, I should mention is I actually edit all my photos on a Wacom tablet. You don't need this. This is just like a more precise way to edit. But when I first got into Photoshop and uh, editing my Milky Way photos, just the mouse worked perfectly fine. Jumping in here now, so let's go ahead and just go over to the develop tab and go through some of the first step things I do when editing photos. Um, the first thing of course is to enable your lens corrections, which, which I've already done. And um, a lot of times your lens uh, will automatically be detected, but these um, Rokinon lenses, uh, they uh, don't get auto detected. So you actually have to manually select your lens. And this isn't the 14 millimeter, I actually have the 24 millimeter 1.4. I have this one, uh, so it'll actually correct the lenses, uh, the lens distortion, uh, and as well as take away some of the chromatic aberration. Uh, so that's the first thing I do. So in this image here, you can see uh, whenever I take photos, I try to get the histogram really in this area, um, in this you know bottom um, quarter, uh, just around uh, that spot there. And this means I'm gonna have a lot of balance. Uh, and the dynamic range, again, a previous video you can see here, uh, I compared the dynamic range of the 5D Mark IV and the A7 III, and uh, the, the dynamic range of the 5D Mark IV is absolutely phenomenal, as is the A7 III. But um, you know, when I, when I take these photos, I'm not super worried that they're a bit dark because I know the dynamic range of the camera will really be able to pick up a lot of these shadows in the foreground. So the first thing I would do is just bring up that exposure a bit to just you know, bring some more balance to the shot. Um, uh, about there. And then I'm gonna bring up the shadows because there's a lot, uh, they're really, really dark right now. But you can see, like, look at the dynamic range of these cameras. It's just crazy how much you can actually change. But we want this to look a bit natural, so we're gonna bring it down uh, to about here. And this is one of the things I should mention, you know, a lot of post-processing is really subjective. This is where, you know, your composition, the creative elements in your composition really meet up with your your visual taste in post-processing. I love to make things really natural looking, really kind of like, you know, if you were out in the field and you, you turned your eyes up to 11, you know, you had this crazy night vision. It's like what you would see if your eyes could really see a lot of detail. You know, some other folks do a lot of different things with post-processing and, you know, my advice to you would be just to emulate something you really love, and then over time, move away from that emulation and, and start to find your own areas uh, where you know you start to develop your own style and your own look and feel to the images. Um, because that's, that's what will make them your own and, and more recognizable over time. 
So jumping back into this shot here, so I think it's it's got a nice balance um, of natural light. It doesn't look like overlit in the foreground and the sky looks somewhat natural. Um, there are a lot of these highlights along the horizon. I'm just gonna bring those back a little bit. Unfortunately, when I dim those highlights though, the Milky Way detail also vanishes. So I think this would be a great opportunity to use a graduated filter and these default settings are not the best. So I'm gonna turn those down and I'm gonna drop the highlights a little bit in the foreground and then that'll affect the horizon. Now I can back these highlights back up in the sky and bring back the Milky Way a little bit more. So that's the basic settings. Uh, you know, whites and blacks, you can play with those too. Maybe just to adjust uh, those wider areas. So the whites will adjust a different part of the, the curve and the blacks will adjust a different part of the curve and the shadows and the highlights will in fact also different parts of the curve. Um, so you can play with these until you, you know, you feel there's a satisfactory balance and contrast in the image. Uh, the next I move down to clarity and clarity is one of these things again where you can just, you know, crank it and be like, oh, wow, so crazy. But, um, you know, maybe just be a little bit conservative with clarity. It's just, again, it's all subjective. So just do whatever you want. But I like to have my clarity around 25 to 30, which some might say is a lot. But nevertheless, this is what I like. And uh, uh, and then dehaze. Dehaze is this filter that kind of removes some of the the fog. Um, and again, you can really overdo it and and uh, bring out a lot of detail, but it starts to your image really starts to look a little bit uh, unnatural, which I don't love myself. So I tend to be fairly conservative with dehaze as well. <clears throat> and that's looking like a pretty great starting point. Uh, and then here I'm going to drop some contrast. The one thing I don't love right now is the color tones uh, in this image. So again, this is one of these things with night nice sky photography that is uh, very super, super subjective because you know the scientific coloring of the night sky is pretty yellow actually. It's not this you know uh, night sky blue. I actually blame Van Gogh for for a lot of the blue skies because his his starry night photos have just been you know have been so culturally entrenched in us that. You know, the night, we, we connect with the night being blue uh, in so many ways. Um, so I tend to lean that direction myself, even though I think if you were to turn your eyes up to 11, uh, you would see more yellows. But I, I digress a little bit here, but uh, I'm just going to use my kind of my personal preference around here. Not too much blue, um, just enough to kind of like get the get these nice tones in, in the blue uh, area. They kind of go with that golden yellow on the horizon. So that's looking pretty great. Um, you know, I haven't done too much. Uh, let's just now adjust the curve. So the curve is really, really, you can add some final touches to your contrast. So what you can do is just have this little gentle S curve uh, and you can see how much contrast just a little S curve does. And you can just crank that a little bit. The blocks are a little bit too, that's about good. And then you can come back and you can adjust the foreground here with another uh, graduated filter. Turn off these default settings and then just bring that foreground back up that we lost by adding that contrast. And it, that looks pretty good. You know, there's a lot of contrast in the sky. It looks pretty nice. Uh, to me, it's a bit too, like, a bit too colorful. I'd actually drop the saturation down a bit to make it look a bit more natural. Uh, and then, you know, uh, that yellow along the horizon is a bit intense. So I'm just gonna grab this saturation tool, which is this little tool here, which will allow you to kind of, uh, it's like a little eyedropper. It'll detect the color and it'll, you can adjust the saturation based on the color in the image. So here you can see them on the orange and the yellows. And by dropping it down, it'll just kill it and look horrible. But I just wanna just drop down these yellows just a little bit because they're, to me, they're just a bit overkill. And then you can see if I move up into the sky, it's gonna adjust the blues and the purples. Um, but I want those to just kind of remain as they are. And then just stepping down, I'll move into sharpening. Uh, there's quite a bit of noise here. So um, zoom in and pan around. Not too bad. So I just generally put the noise reduction at around 10. Uh, if I'm really feeling crazy I can bump it to 15 
And one of the kind of byproducts of noise reduction is that it softens the image quite a lot. So uh, this is a, maybe a nice glowy effect, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's, it's kind of nice to have this ethereal kind of feel to your image. But uh, you know, you can really crank the noise reduction and have it be quite a quite a mess or a soup. It everything all the just looks like it's a blurry blurry pile. But I usually put it around 15 or so because I don't I don't actually mind a little bit of noise. There, uh, that image is looking pretty fantastic. Um, what else is there here? Any kind of transforms or, or rotations or crops? Um, I'll also kind of just adjust like if. Well, my the ground looks pretty level and this airplane here is driving me crazy so let's let's go ahead and zoom in on that uh, let's go zoom in three to one yeah there we go and there is this uh, spot removal tool that we can use uh, let's use the square brackets to bring that down and this what we can select areas where we would like to have this spot this airplane line just slowly go away I'm just selecting areas close by that I think will match nicely because we don't want this to look too fake let's get in there and just let's just do one of these paint it and see if we can get an area that looks nice let's move down here a little bit that looks pretty good. Let's zoom out. Oh, there's a little bit left here. You go ahead and just paint that whole area. Perfect. Let's move this away from stars. We don't want to clone stars because then you can really tell that there was a muddy mess there. So with the clone stamp, when you're zoomed in, you can kind of see some remnants, but I think for the most part, when you zoom out, it's pretty clean. And if you look, uh, it's a little bit obvious. I think with Photoshop, we'll be able to get rid of that a lot better um, than here in Lightroom. But for now, that looks pretty good. So overall, that image is looking pretty fantastic. Uh, and this is where I would probably call it quits. One of the things I would add is that what you could could possibly do is use this brush um, adjustment brush there's this really cool new feature in um, in Lightroom um, called range mask which is right here if I go down to luminance this will allow me to adjust the luminance. so if I hold down the alt or option key on the Mac uh, alt on the PC you can see where this uh, mask will be affecting the image. Right now there's nothing really there, so uh, there's not much that, to show you, but if I start painting in this area, and I just wanna like kind of bring out some of the details in the Milky Way a little bit. Now, if you look at that, that looks pretty horrendous. <laughs> that looks horrible. Uh, so let's bring that back down to planet Earth a little bit, and we're gonna bring up the highlights. But the thing is with the highlights is that we're gonna, again, we're gonna give this kind of overinflated view of the Milky Way. It looks, it just looks fake. It doesn't look natural. So if you go back down to this range mask and we select this while holding Alt, this will allow us to kind of tune where we want that, um, where we want that, uh, that mask to affect the image. So you can see now it looks, it's only affecting the brighter areas of the image. Then so we turn this on and off. You can see it's really only adjusting to some of the lighter areas. And now I can kind of play a bit more and bring up some more detail in the Milky Way without it looking super fake. Um, and what I think we can do now is just come back in with the erase tool and just kind of fine tune adjust any kind of areas where it's really bleeding um, outside. And then we're just going to add, oops, we're going to add a little bit of clarity to that area. Okay, so this is the final view of the uh, processed image that we did in here in Lightroom. And, and that didn't take all that long, it's just a few minutes um, going through the settings. And I think we got a pretty nice result here. 
Uh, and looking at the, you know, the before, this is the before and this is the after, it's quite a significant difference. So one is very raw and, you know, needs to be developed and one is very kind of uh, brought to life and kind of, again, if you turn your eyes up to 11 out there at night, this is what you would, this is what you might see. Cool. So in the next uh, chapter of post-processing, I'm going to go into further depth um, with this image, but instead of just Lightroom alone, I'm going to edit this in Lightroom and in Photoshop. And I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit more about uh, luminosity masks. We touched a little bit uh, on the luminosity um, stuff here in Lightroom, but next I'm going to show you how it works in Photoshop. Okay, so in this next part, uh, we're basically going to start over from the beginning with this image here. And if I reset this so it's nothing, I'll, uh, I'll walk you through every step again, just this time with the workflow from uh, Lightroom and Photoshop back into Lightroom. And uh, this will be a little bit more advanced, um, but I'll try to keep it, you know, not too, too long. Um, so you guys can kind of get your feet wet with this whole process. So. Uh, yeah, just, just I'll jump in here. So the first thing I do is in Lightroom, again, import all my images, uh, and then I'll go down to Lens Corrections, and this is the first thing I'll do. So I'll enable it, and I'll go down to, you know, select my lens, which is a Rokinon. Uh, it's at the 24 millimeter f1.4, which is right there. And this will just kind of do some basic setup for me. Uh, and then the next step is I'll, you know, just do some adjustments to either crop or uh, in the leveling to make sure that I have everything right and I just get the perfect the crop that I'm looking for. I wanted to have a little bit less of the sky and get this one hay bale here uh, down here. I wanted to get to it closer to the third. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty good because there's some hay bales. You can't really see them here, but these, this is like a nice leading line into the M Milky Way here, which I love. Uh, yeah, so that's, the, that's basically what I do. Lens corrections and then crop and rotation. And from here, I go down to my image and I'll say right click and I'll go to edit in. And then I'll say edit in Photoshop CC 2018. And Photoshop loads up the image. So this is Photoshop here, and as you can see here on the right, I have this um, these two panels that are really helpful for a lot of photography work. These are the TK Actions panels um, by Tony Kuiper, uh, and these are just absolutely phenomenal for um, for landscape and night sky photographers. Um, they have this panel here, which is just basically a bunch of helper tools to make shortcuts to a lot of common things that. Um, you know photographers need to edit but then there's this panel down here which is all your luminosity masks and I'll give you a quick run through when I'm editing this about what some of these things do uh, as well as you might see me use some of these things and I'll, but I'll mention that what they um, what they actually do in the menu so you if you don't have this you don't need to worry about it the one thing I will mention before jumping in here though and this is like I'm not affiliated with toner Kuiper or these action panels but if you go over to uh, his website there is actually a free version like the full version here uh, you know is what I have and it's absolutely just I I wouldn't I can't recommend it more um, for your workflow and it's super cheap it's it's uh, 35 bucks um, but there's actually an option down here that has the TK Atkins panel um, for 35 bucks as well as Sean Bagshaw, super amazing uh, landscape photographer. Uh, he has a video series that teaches you basically all the steps about all of those buttons and what they all do. So a package, 54 bucks, uh, it's like having a crazy, uh, you know, workshop all in one. Uh, and he has these like awesome walkthroughs about all the features. And I think he even has some videos where he'll walk you through um, complete workflows Again, not not meaning to be a sales guy for for Sean and Tony here, but uh, these are just phenomenal. I would highly recommend if you really um, want to learn a whole bunch of new stuff about landscape photography uh, and editing landscape photography, have a look at these uh, as well as look at the TK Actions panel. But to go back to what we're talking about, uh, there's a free panel here which will allow you to do a lot of luminosity masks. Uh, so if you don't want to pay for it, that's totally fine. You can download the free version. I think all you have to do is uh, 
is uh, sign up for his newsletter or something like that. But uh, long story short, these things are phenomenal and I highly recommend uh, using them and I will use them a little bit in this video um, so you can, uh, you know, because there's no cost so there's really no harm in, in at least getting that one panel because it's going to save you a lot of time. So okay, so let's jump back into editing here. Um, so my general workflow starts with, uh, I'll duplicate the layer, which is again, this is Tony Kuiper's uh, panel here to duplicate. Again, you can go to uh, layer, duplicate layer, um, but this is a nice little short helpful. And then I'll go to filter, uh, camera raw filter. And this basically loads up like a Lightroom-esque editor. And I can just do some, just some initial adjustments to my, my exposure. Uh, and then my shadows, much like I talked to you guys earlier about uh, in Lightroom. Uh, I'll add a lot of clarity. Uh, 30, that looks pretty good. Gives me lots of nice contrast. A little bit of dehaze to get rid of some of that, more, you know, humidity in the sky. Not too much though. And again, just drop the temperature. Similar to the effects I did in Lightroom alone, but this time I'm just doing it within a filter here in Photoshop. Uh, and that looks pretty good. I might drop the saturation a little bit because it looks a little bit overkill. So that's my first step there. And then I'm gonna duplicate the layer again. And this, this next step is something I learned from a photographer and YouTuber, Peter McKinnon. Uh, I would, I'll link to his video here. One of the tips I took out of that video was, was doing this. So I'll go up and I'll actually change the layer mode to uh, soft light, which totally kills the image. And then from here, I'll go to blur and I'll give it a radius of about nine, maybe seven, something just really subtle, not too, too much. And then I'll say, okay. And then I'm gonna drop the opacity of this down to about 50. And what this does is it just gives a little bit of like this glow and sharp uh, contrast to the, to the sky which I absolutely love. <clears throat> One of the consequences though, of course, is that all the black areas are gonna to be totally blown out. So what I'll do from here is I'll add a layer mask. And what I wanna do is I just wanna like paint in this bottom area so that that effect that we um, created doesn't affect the foreground as much because it's, a, it's really quite dark now. So I'm gonna put my, go to my brush Make my brush a little bit smaller with the air, the bracket tools left and right. Or uh, if you have a tablet, you can use this little spin wheel. And I'm going to um, put my opacity of my brush pretty low, maybe at 30. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to paint out and mask out. Because black means, in a mask, means you, you don't want it to appear. White means you do want it to appear. So I'm just going to remove some of that. And you can see how the foreground's coming back to life a little bit. So that looks pretty good. Now if I do before and after, you can see how much mood it adds to the, uh, to the image and adds a lot of contrast, which is awesome too. So from here, it still looks a little bit, um, a little bit dark. So what I usually do in Photoshop, which is super powerful, um, and you can do this in Lightroom too, but I find that Photoshop just has, it's faster and the tools are just a little bit better. So if I go and add a new layer and I go to overlay and I paint with white, this is gonna essentially, it's gonna dodge my image and just give me some really nice um, effects in this foreground. So I'm just gonna kind of paint over the dark area and you can see how it lightens that dark area. Now, sometimes I don't want this to affect the sky. Like you can see up here, it's kind of, uh, you know, affected the sky in these areas. And this is where luminosity masks come in. And luminosity masks are essentially a, a mask or uh, uh, that's what a mask is like a black and white area, white being, uh, revealed black being not revealed and what luminosity masks will do especially in this this uh, uh, actions panel by uh, Tony Kuiper is that it'll allow, give you a range of tones to mask out so say for example darks on this side lights on this side if I go on the darks like this it's gonna mask out the dark areas and if I go on this side it's gonna create a mask of the light areas so if, and it gives me a range of options. So if I want really dark areas, I can do the four, 
Or I can, if I want just some of like the mid-tones to the dark areas, I can do a one. And vice versa for the lights. If I want just the really, really bright areas that are blown out, I can do four. Or if I want to step back, I can do three or two. And this will create, essentially, it'll, when I, when I modify the photo, the part that's in white and gray will be affected and the parts in black won't be affected, which is super, super awesome. So I want, you know, that foreground up to be selected. Uh, so I'm going to look at this and that looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to hit the apply button and that's going to apply it to that dodge layer. So now it really only affects the foreground without affecting the sky. And this is the power of luminosity masks. That's just so awesome. And this in this actions panel. So I'm going to paint a little bit more, bring bring up that foreground a little bit. And you can just see how um, how powerful that is. You can really add some really beautiful detail into your your images without it kind of looking like a uh, like messy or unnatural. You can keep it this really nice natural look, which is what I really want to do with my images. So next, you know, along the horizon here, it's really kind of blown out because of this light pollution. So I'm gonna look at the light luminosity mask. This looks pretty cool. It gets a lot of it, but it also gets a lot of the Milky Way. So I'll show you what I do here. So I'm gonna do another layer and I'm gonna go down to soft light. And then I'm gonna change my color to black and I'm gonna go to my, my brush tool. And this is basically essentially dodging. This will dodge your image. So if I come along here and I go along the sky, you can see how it darkens. But you can also see how it's darkening everything because I'm not masked right now. And you can see how it's not really feathered together and it looks kind of a little bit gross. So what I would do is I go into the to luminosity masks again. I'd select a luminosity mask that I think would, you know, work with this selection um, that I want to do. And this is, this area makes a lot of the horizon light um, bright. So I'm going to select this one and then I'm going to apply it to my layer. And then now you can see how that burn really only affects those lit areas. So I can bring down um, that light pollution on the horizon and have it only affect the areas that I want to. And this is going to bring a lot of balance to my image. So I'm just going to go over here with this subtle brush. Again, I'm about 30%. And if I want to get a little bit more fine tuned, I can go to about 20%. And this will allow me again, just to, just to naturally darken that horizon. And you can see before, and after and it looks just a lot more natural okay so the next step is adding some contrast and detail to the night sky to bring out some of those dark lanes in the milky way because they're one of my favorite things uh, overall so again new layer i'm going to go to soft light now if, if you did have the full tk actions panel you can there's these tools here burn and dodge that basically do all this these steps for you but uh, if you don't have these you can do it this way and still get away with it uh, if you get the free actions panel, you'll, I believe you'll get all of these luminosity masks. So I'm going to go into the darks because these areas up here are very dark. There's a contrast between the lit up areas here. Uh, let me get my selection. My little there's this area is really bright. This area is really dark. So you want to select the darks. So I'm going to try three. You can see up here. You can see some of the lanes come out. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good. Let's try two. Now it might be overkill. So what this panel also gives you the option to do is to modify the uh, the layer, uh, the layer uh, um, luminosity mask rather. So if I go to levels, move this out of the way so you can see, and drop this down, you can start to see how it's only gonna allow you to adjust that selection to really get the dark areas, you know, well well uh, highlighted and well lit up here in this white area. So I think that looks pretty good for a selection. And then I'm gonna come down here and go to apply. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my black paintbrush and I'm going to put my opacity up to about 40. And then I'm just going to start painting in the sky where, where the Milky Way is, just ever so subtly. And then I'm going to bump down to about 20% or 10% and just kind of do some more. I'll go back up to 20%. And just paint around happy Milky Way, Bob Ross style, happy little Milky Way clouds. <laughs> and uh, yeah just kind of keep it looking natural. That's the one thing is sometimes you see, you know, they want to highlight the Milky Way by just blasting it with a lot of, you know, over, you know, uh, 
don't know, just increasing the exposure, but it doesn't look super natural. But that's what these luminosity masks will do. They'll make it look super natural. And I think that looks super fantastic and, and really subtle and beautiful. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is the opposite. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna create a new layer. And I go down to overlay. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna get my white brush out now. Go to B and then uh, rotate this to white. And then I'm gonna look at the lights luminosity masks. And that's pretty good because a lot of the clouds of the Milky Way are lit up here. I'm gonna to go to the levels to just see if I can modify this ever so slightly, get rid of some of the blacks and really focus in on the Milky Way stuff. You can see a lot of the horizon is coming in with me as well. So I gotta be careful when I paint not to get those areas. So this looks pretty good and then I'm gonna apply. And now I'm gonna brush white into these areas and just lighten up some of the parts of the Milky Way that I think would be really cool to see, these clouds. And that's pretty much it. I actually might be overkill. Bring it back a little bit. Awesome, I think that looks great. Um, so that is kind of the power of luminosity masks. And I think it just really adds a lot of detail um, and allows you to really fine tune the light you want to see and get rid of that light that you don't want to see. So you can really um, perfect the composition that you want to show people. Have that, you know, that um, share your perspective of the night sky, your subjective perspective, because it really is your own view. And this is what Photoshop and all this post processing is really about, is about finding your own um, voice in what you're trying to communicate with your images. Um, it starts with a lot of just technical stuff, but over time that technical stuff will just become second nature, like driving a car, you know, you just don't think about it anymore. And then you start to fine tune those adjustments to really bring out your own style. So um, and that's what I really hope that you uh, take away from these videos is that it's not just about the technical, it's really about using the technical to develop your own voice and style over time. So. Again, another dig digression, but um, one thing here that I'm noticing is that there's this uh, this dirty old airplane, which I just just drives me crazy. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get rid of this thing. So I'm going to select all, uh, and I'm going to go up to copy, copy merged. Uh, I've created a new layer. I'll do it again. Create a new layer and then paste. And what this will do is it basically it will uh, put a whole like the combination of all these things into one layer. And this is essentially, now we've kind of moved gone from the non-destructive stuff, so I can like backpedal through all my changes here if I wanted to, which is really cool because I can adjust things. But as soon as I copy merged, I basically said, I'm good. Like I'm, I'm good with the, all the coloration, the color, the dodging and burning, but now I just want to do some final modifications to wrap things up. So I want to get rid of this, uh, this airplane line. So there's a couple ways I can do this. I can lasso it as best as I can, try to keep as many stars there, and then shift backspace, which brings up fill. I want content aware fill, color adaption on, hit OK. Boom, gets rid of that airplane, just awesome. Like, you know, just fantastic. Yoink, bye bye plane. Uh, so that's what I do. There's no many other planes here. There's this crazy distortion around Mars, but you know what? That's just lens distortion. I'm just gonna leave that, you know. I think if I played around with that, it might get a little bit too uh, just fake looking. And sometimes lens flare is just part of the process. So I'm gonna leave that. So overall, I think this looks pretty phenomenal right now. Um, one of the things I mentioned earlier was that Peter McKinnon video where he adds this, you know, soft glow. Um, but what you can do now, which is the second part of that video, is you can, um, you know, merge, duplicate the current layer uh, by, you can go to layer, duplicate. <clears throat> and then what you can do is you can go to the blending mode of hard light, and then you can go up to the layer uh, menu into, sorry, image and then adjustments and then desaturate. This will make it black and white. And then you can go to filter, other, high pass, and this will add some sharpening to your image. Radius of two is usually pretty nice because I don't want to overdo it because again, if you do too much, it'll bring out a lot of noise. So you can see this, if I turn this on and off, it added a lot of sharpening. So I want to just kind of back this up a little bit, about, you know, 89. Add a layer mask because I want to maintain this kind of glowy sky. I don't want it to be sharp. So again, put the layer mask on, go to your paintbrush, make sure it's on black. 
uh, and we're gonna go about 80% black because we wanna have the sky maintain that kind of glowiness that we added earlier. It's a bit like, I guess you could call it a Orton effect, um, but uh, it's just, it's this, this contrasty blurry-ness uh, that just adds a little bit of this magic to the sky, which is really nice. Uh, and the, the foreground looks a bit heavy still, so I'm going to drop this sh sharpening down to about 60. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, let's zoom in here and have a peek. It's pretty noisy, but you know we'll, we'll touch up some of that noise uh, when we go back to Lightroom. So at this point here, I think we're ready to rock. This image is, is finished in my mind uh, in Photoshop. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump back into Lightroom. So what I do is I go to Layer and I'll uh, flatten the image because I know I'm done now. So uh, I, I don't tend to go back and edit my photos, but if you did want to, you could save this now and maintain all of your edits. But for me, it's, it's not a big deal. I just, I just uh, flatten the image because it keeps the file size from getting too massive. I come over here and I uh, delete these uh, channels from the TK Actions panel. Again, with those in there, it's gonna make my file size just huge. So now I have no channels, I have no layers, I just have my work. Uh, I leave this open though, and I'll, I'll hit save. And what this do is gonna do is it's gonna bring this back into Lightroom, but I won't close Photoshop. I'll keep it open just in case, because what I can do is I can go up to the edit menu, step backward, step backward, and then boom, I have all my layers back. So if I find that I wanna get in there and I, you know, like, oh, I really regret, you know, something I did, I, can, I have the opportunity to go back until I'm really, you know, happy with the image. So. That's kind of my workflow. Uh, people might want to save it at this point, but you're going to have like a two or three or four gigabyte file. And I don't know, I just don't like to keep those files around. I can always edit again if I want to. So then I go back to Lightroom. And in Lightroom, we now see the edited image from Photoshop automatically imported. And this is where, um, again, once you've done all the technical details, you've balanced the, the contrast, you've got everything the way you want it to look. This is where I add my personal final touches. This is like where I'll do my final kind of comb over to make it look like a, a Matt Quinn image. Um, and this is something, again, something you can develop uh, yourself over time. I'm develop. I mean, it's always a work in progress with you as an artist and what you want to accomplish with your images. So what I do now is probably not what I'm gonna do in two years from now. And it's definitely not what I did a few years ago. So this is what I'll do then, I just add my own final touches. But for this video, um, well, I'll just kind of walk through a few of the, the things that are more general. You know, I'll come in and I'll add some noise reduction. So, you know, 15 or 16, I'll look at the sky here and it looks pretty good. The, the foreground's a bit noisy, but again, it's a nice photo. It's not gonna be perfectly clear and it, it looks pretty, pretty nice. Uh, you don't wanna overdo the noise. Um, uh, reduction because it starts to look a little bit muddy. I might add a little bit more contrast by bumping this, just giving a gentle S curve to my image. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom here, uh, vignette, and just back off the vignette because that contrast added a bit of a vignette. Uh, actually, that those highlights are probably a bit too intense, so I'm going to bring those back down. That looks better. Just super subtle stuff at this point. I, I still think it's a bit too saturated, so I like, you know, not super saturated. A lot of people will just crank it at this point, but it just starts to look like, like you know, like a clown with makeup on or something. You know, it's just like, oh, uh, you know. But again, all this stuff that I'm saying is super subjective. It's really up to your own personal taste. I actually bring the saturation down uh, just because that's just what I do right now. And uh, if you know things aren't looking too contrasty, I might just play with the clarity just to see what I get. But at this point, too much more clarity is gonna add a lot of noise. But overall, I feel like this image is really balanced. It has a nice lot of nice tones to it. Um, you know, if anything, it, maybe I could just drop the highlights ever so slightly. Um, yeah, that's so that in a nutshell is the workflow that I go through to process um, uh, Milky Way photos. Okay guys, so that was it. That is how you process Milky Way photos. At least that's how I process Milky Way photos. There's no right way and wrong way to do this stuff, but this is just how I do it and how uh, I think about um, putting my images together and putting them out into the world. You know, 
I hope over time that you know you maybe watch this and it gives you some ideas and tips on how to make your own Milky Way um, images and nice guy images pop. But from that point, you know, from here, fine tuning it to make it really your own, finding those little tweaks at the end to make it really your own shot. And then a lot of a lot of things too, like making sure that you know the compositions that you 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 um, photograph are things you're really proud of, you know, things that you really want to share. Um, and in co combination with this visual style that you develop in post-processing, really make your voice and your message stand clear in this whole uh, world of photography, which is super saturated these days and it's super hard to stand out. Uh, and a lot of, you know, there's a lot of kind of, uh, you know, a big push to just duplicate and replicate images for a lot of, you know, likes and fame on social media and those who kind of, you know, opt to go in a different direction from that might not have that kind of success on social media. Nevertheless, I think in the long run, you're going to win because you're going to have your own voice and you're going to have your own vision. You're going to tell your own stories and it's going to be super authentic and it's going to be you. It's going to be yours. So that's the one thing I want you to take away from this video. It's yes, it's another post-processing Milky Way video, but I really want to underscore and underline that, you know, what you do um, in post-processing uh, to make it your own will really make your work stand out on its own. Um, and if you don't have to be uh, always creating these sensational photos. You can create really beautiful, meaningful shots that represent you and your story. Um, and that's what really matters to people is, is that you're communicating what you're going through. Uh, and you know, maybe you won't see that immediate success, but you will in the long run. So long story short, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a ton of the, the techniques and tips that I use, the technical stuff, as well as some of my kind of, uh, you know, unsolicited advice around the whole world of, uh, you know, putting your work uh, out there and making it your own. So if you love this video, I'd really appreciate it if you click that like button below. And if you want to see more of these videos, please do subscribe because I'm putting out all sorts of videos about, uh, you know, the technical stuff, but more so in the future, I'm going to be transitioning to but more of that night sky experience. And this is really just about telling a story of what it's like being out there under the night sky because that's what I love the most you know it's I love being able to share it but sharing it is is just a, like a, a method of bringing this experience home and sharing that experience and trying to inspire others to get out there and have these experiences so in these future videos I want to kind of take you along with me and show you what it's like being under the night sky and uh, being under the stars because there's just a photograph is great but it just does not match the life, you know, real life experience of being under the stars. Um, it's just, you have 360 vision, it's, uh, you know, there's sounds, there's the wind, there's, it's just, there's a whole experience that you're not having with photographs, but I hope this, uh, these tutorials, um, and these videos that I'm producing inspire you to get out there, um, in a safe way, of course, um, be safe. Um, and experience some of these beautiful things that nature has to offer um, to go along with this the, the technological crazy world that we live in with social media and you know 24-hour news cycle and so on take a break from that head north to the dark skies get out a blanket and just lie and enjoy the view cool so we'll see you guys in the next one take care